Good day to you. Welcome. My name is Chelsea. Today I want to share with you a little bit about my experience with wigs. When I was diagnosed and I was told that I was going to be going through chemotherapy treatment, one of the things that popped into my head was, I have to get a wig. And I don't know why that came into my head because it was never said by anybody that if I was going to lose my hair, I needed to get a wig, but it just came to my mind. That external pressure from I don't know where it came from put a lot of extra pressure on me in a situation where I was already feeling the heat and already feeling overwhelmed. So today I'd like to share with you a few things that I learned about wearing wigs going through chemotherapy that I would have appreciated having this knowledge prior to going out and shopping for a wig so my hope is that this will make your experience a little bit easier. I have no idea why I felt like I had to get a wig, why I had that gut reaction to losing my hair, because the truth is I didn't have to get one and neither do you. This journey is 100% yours to navigate as you see fit. Nobody can experience this for you Therefore, you get to decide what your journey looks like. If you want to get a wig, great, get a wig. If you want to get a wig and you want it to be completely outrageous and look nothing like your current hair, have fun with it. If you want to be a little bit more reserved and you want to get something that's really similar to the same style that you have right now, great, get that. Maybe you don't want to get a wig at all. That's completely fine too. There is no pressure to get a wig. So remove that from your shoulders and just decide what feels right for you. I am a licensed hairstylist and I should have known better, but when I went shopping for a wig, I got 100% caught up in the emotion of it and how it looked versus paying attention to the fit and the feel. So you may be thinking the feel and the fit, what does that even mean? So let me give an example. So say you were going shopping for a new bra and I don't know about you, but a couple of the first things that I look for are the color and the style. But then once I have those narrowed down, I need to go in and I need to look at the size and kind of the fit. So if you get this cute bra, it's the perfect style, it's the perfect color, but then you go to put it on and it's all loose on your body or it's cutting in somewhere, it's really tight, things are bulging out in different areas, or maybe you put it on and the seams are so darn itchy, you just can't wait to get it off. Forgetting about the feel and the fit is like getting that bra based on solely the color. And this is exactly what I did. When I got home and I put on my wigs and I started wearing them, I realized that they were way too big for my head. And once I started losing my hair, I realized that they were extremely itchy. So I'll show you my wig so I can explain a little bit more <laughs> the mistakes that I made so that you don't. So this was one of the wigs I got. She's very pretty, I think. Um, okay, so if you look on the inside, you can see that this is a cap and coming through the cap are the wefts of hair because this one is machine made. Now, when I had hair on my head and I was trying this on, I didn't really feel this much because the hair was protecting it. But once my scalp was bald and sensitive, I really felt this. Um, so something to be aware of. The other thing that happened, well, I have a really petite head. And even though this one does have little hooks, you see, you can tighten it. When I did that, it created little bulges um, in the wig, which created kind of poofs on my head. So it didn't sit very flat. And the other thing is just the fact that it was so big for my head, I felt like it was always falling forward on my face and I kind of always felt like I needed to pull it back 
um, off my forehead so it wasn't overwhelming me. Um, and just kind of that uncomfortable feeling of not knowing how my wig is fitting was enough to make me not wear it as much as I would have. And the other thing I noticed was since this cap was so big, I felt it pulling down on my ears and that was really uncomfortable too. So the size really is something that is important to be aware of if you're wanting to have a wig that you're going to wear often. I still wore my wigs, um, but it was it was like for a few hours at a time and I couldn't wait to get home to take them off. With that being said, you don't need to get a custom wig or anything like that. Just when you're shopping, just be aware of sizing as well as them being cute and the right style for you. And um, another option you could do is to get a wig cap, which is a nylon beanie that you can put on to protect your scalp. I just didn't. By the time I realized uh, my mistake, I was right in the middle of chemo and uh, just kind of okay with not wearing a wig. But if you are going to be prepared and get that organized, then that's a good tip too. I personally had a hard time finding a wig that I really connected with, that I really resonated with and was excited to wear. And I found that as time went on and I was getting closer to losing my hair, I was getting more and more stressed about finding the one. And I was noticing that I was getting more open to spending more money on a wig than I initially wanted to. So wigs can have very big price tags depending on what you decide to get. Now both of my wigs are um, machine made. They are half human hair, half um, acrylic or fake hair. Um, so they are definitely not a high range wig and I am totally okay with that. But what I would recommend is before you go shopping, kind of similar to when and if you go wedding shopping, is to set a budget for yourself and what you would be comfortable in paying for a wig so that when you get there, you don't get caught up in the emotion of it and get something that's outside of what you're comfortable with. I never really found the one that one wig that kind of made me feel like on top of the world every time I wore it. And of course my perfect wig is long because I've always wanted long hair, but I did find a couple of options and I'll show you them. This one, the first one I found, I found at West Edmonton Mall in one of the wig stores there. It's a nice kind of dark brown with the burgundy hint to it. I like this one because it was a little bit closer to my, um, the hair that I had before I lost it. It was always dark brown. So this was a good one, mid-range length. And then the other one I was showing you before I found, and the cool thing about this one is that I actually received this from the Cancer Society wig room. They had a whole room of donated wigs and scarves available to anyone who was getting their treatment at the center, and it was all for free. So going in and knowing that there was no price tag on anything in there and I could just have fun and enjoy the experience of trying on all these different styles, that was a really nice experience for me. Um, and I ended up finding this one. She is nice and long. She's got a massive fringe and I love the little purple pink highlights in here. It's something completely different and something I've never done with my hair and she's long so I like that. So make sure if you are on a budget or if you aren't even sure if you want a wig so you don't want to invest a lot of money into it, check the cancer societies in your area or check your treatment center to see if they know of anyone um, who donates wigs to use. When it was all said and done, I would say that I ended up wearing my wigs three to four times a month. 
And the main reasons why I didn't wear them were they weren't comfortable. My head was always hot from chemotherapy treatment. It was extremely easy just to throw on a toque over my bald head or lotion it up and go out like that. And the last one, I felt extremely empowered just to be me in my bald head most of the time and I didn't feel like I needed to wear a wig. However, it was a nice piece to have in my back pocket for those days when I just felt like something different or I just kind of wanted to blend in and not have those are you sick eyes or conversations when going out in public. I learned that wigs are not the be all end all to hair loss and chemotherapy treatment. They are an accessory there to support you. They are there to have some fun with should you choose, but only you can decide if they're right for you and if they find a place within your journey. I hope this video helps take a little bit of pressure off of your shoulders when going shopping for wigs or not going. In a future video, I'm going to be putting on my two wigs and sharing with you some styling ideas. So if you'd like to be here for that, please like and subscribe to this channel. I hope that you have the most wonderful day. See you next time.